Good morning, everyone. We are continuing here in the words of the Pele Yoyetz in Abbas Loim De Torah, the love that we should have for those that are learning is Torah, that fear Hashem's name and are concerned with being the Kaddish Shem Shemayim. And today we'll wrap up this chapter. We've been speaking about the entire time how much the rest of Klal Yisrael should have a harach, should have a value that they place on such people, people that are spending their time and their days, their weeks, their months, their years, delving into the wisdom of the Torah, delving into the Ratzon of Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu's will. And then of course the goal of all learning is that they want to share that with Klal Yisrael. We know that the great leaders of the Jewish people, they become the Eine Ha'eda, they become the eyes of the generation, the eyes of the nation which means that they see things and they understand things and they know things on a much higher and heightened level than the rest of us. And therefore, when they take that learning and they then transfer it into the world of Klal Yisrael around them, so they enlighten us and they open our eyes to the emiss to the truth. However, today he concludes with the following idea, and that is, V'gam atamidei even the Torah scholars, or also the Torah scholars, they must be very careful in the honor that they accord to their wealthy brothers and sisters. Because they are benefiting from the wealth of these people. And they are the ones that are machzik, they end up giving strength in their hands to them. Shim Omru, and like it says in the Gemara, Sherebi and Rebbe Akiva, Rebbe and the great Rebbe Akiva, they used to give great honor and accord to the Ashirim, to the wealthy. Afshla, even though Rebbe Akiva didn't need them, Rebbe Akiva was independently wealthy, he had a very rich father in law. Rebbe was a wealthy man, he didn't need the rich people to support him. Nevertheless, they saw them as conduits. And as shluchim, as messengers that HaKadosh Baruch Hu put into this world to funnel his money into the world to the people that needed it the most. And therefore they were chosen by HaKadosh Baruch Hu as a messenger to do his bidding, as a person that's going to be like a pipeline of money that's going to go from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to the poor, to the institutions, to the schools, to the yeshivas, to the families that are in need. And therefore they were mechabed them, they honored them greatly. Even though they, they themselves personally did not need them. And therefore he writes, Kol someone who needs the wealthy. Vinenamem, and you benefit from them, you get stuck from them, you get supported by them. Dichiyuva ram ya'alei shalei kafi toiva. You have to know that you have an obligation not to be a kafi toiva, someone who do, denies the good that is done for them. Ulechav dem ktsas, you have to give them some honor. Vilitroch ktsas, you have to work a little bit hard alayhem for them. Lemebad lahay naich rucha, to make sure that they are in good spirits and they are they have nachas when they see where their money is going towards. Vechiba yeseri einoidas lehem, you have to let them know how much you love them and you are, you are happy with what they are doing and that you want to show them the honor and the respect that they deserve. And yes, you should show them a wonderful way that you relate to them. You should speak to them kindly, peacefully, warmly, and let them know how appreciative you are of what they've done. It says the says the Pelayoyets that Toive Teichachas Megula Meava, even sometimes you have to give them here he's saying that it, it doesn't mean that you have to machnia humble yourself in their presence. You are the Talmud Chacham, and they are the supporter. And therefore you can help them to go along in the pathways that are good for them as well. Not just to give them money, but they also have to work on themselves. They also have to learn. They have to, have to refine their midas. And therefore even when it's necessary, you can give them a little bit of gentle criticism and love that is necessary. The Ishtatfu B'Tzarosam, however, says the Pelayoyets, make sure that you join in in their tsarasam, in their difficulties in life. 
You should help to support them with their spiritual, emotional needs and daven on their behalf when they are going through troubling times. And your prayer should always be on them. In order that they should be, uh, they should be seichelik. They should have wisdom and insight into all that they do, so that they should be able to continue making their funds, their money, and supporting Torah in the beautiful way that they do. The Torah that you learn, the good deeds that you do, the positive things that you're involved with, that you are being sustained by their charity and by their chesed, you should have in mind that the reward is going to go to them as well. Like this and like this, a wise man should take a lesson and live his life, conduct his life in a way that is going to be pleasing in the eyes of Hashem and pleasing in the eyes of Adam, in the eyes of man around him. So everybody over here is a winner. The people that have the that are sitting and learning and they are able to uncover the depths of the wisdom of HaKadosh Baruch and His Torah and increase in the year Shemaim and their Kiddush Shem Shemaim. So they're winning out, they're living such an exalted, exemplary life, such a closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And those that are in the position of contributing the funds to such people so that they can sit and they can learn. So they don't have to have the tear of schlepping around the world to try to make a living, to pay for a wedding and to pay for this and to pay for that and to put food on the table. You also went out because you're supporting people that have a noble endeavor in this world and you're getting a big chilek, a portion of the reward that they're receiving for the Torah learning and the Avodah Hashem that they are doing as well. So it's a win-win. We call it in Hebrew, it's the Yisachar Zevulon partnership. Yisachar was the son of Yaakov Avinu who was busy in the tents of study learning. Zevulon was the one that went out onto the seas and he went out to make Parnassah, to make a, a, live, a living and a livelihood. And Zevulon supported Yisachar. So Yisachar could do what he was doing, and Zavulin did what he was doing, but they worked together in a partnership. When Kla Yisrael works together in such a partnership like this, it's a win-win for everyone. May we be zeichet to recognize what does HaKadosh Baruch Hu want from us? Does He want us to be from those that are sitting in the base Midrash and learning? Or does He want us to be from those that are helping to support and facilitate and sustain those that are learning? Whatever your position is, it's golden in the eyes of the Rebbein Nisha'ilam. And therefore we should just fulfill to the best of our abilities to be true partners with each other, partners with Klal Yisrael. And in that way, it will be toiv be'eni elokim. It will be good in the eyes of Hashem, ve'odom, and in the eyes of our fellow Jews. Have a wonderful day.